my name is Jason Sheldrick. I'm a uh, senior project manager at Blanco Architecture. We specialize in building forensics, waterproofing consulting, um, and technical architecture. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about Morfolio Trace, my favorite features, and uh, how I use the app on my iPad. So I'm gonna show you how I typically go about drawing a detail. Um, I am gonna draw, show you how I produce this detail here. I copied it over, I'm gonna click into it. So I work between the design architect and the general contractor on kind of um, difficult one-off details. And we show them how to incorporate materials <clears throat> and building systems into their details to make them uh, waterproof and function. Now here is the detail that I'm looking at. It is a window head. Um, it's between an indoor kitchen and an outdoor kitchen and it's being used as a pass-through. And it has this cool um, steel plate kind of trim around it. So what I do is I bring it into the drawing and I scale it and then to place it, I change the opacity of the detail. And so I place it on the sheet thinking about where I'm gonna put my annotation. So I know I can have annotations here, I can have some annotations on the inside, I also have room for doing a little axonometric detail up in the corner. <laughs> so once I have that imported, I like to set up uh, my pens. They're always usually pretty much the same. Um, I draw in black and white and I just use grays for fills just to keep things simple. But I like to close this so I have a, as much real estate on the screen as I can. So the first thing I do is I turn down the opacity <clears throat> and then on my first layer, I rough in the structure. So here you can see I'm roughing in the, the rough framing in, in the RO, the window, uh, the plywood sheathing, the steel structure, and I'm gonna build on top of that. I usually leave this turned on, maybe a little lighter just to reference it, and I'll start building it up. And in this case, since I concentrate on building envelope and construction details, here I'm starting to put in the waterproofing membrane. So we use a lot of liquid applied waterproofing. So I'm flashing the rough opening, the steel angle goes in, and then I'm flashing over the steel angle. Next, I put in the window itself. This is a, a screen that slides into a pocket. This is a metal window frame um, and a slider. So this is the operable sash, this is the frame and it is being attached to the steel angle uh, with flush head screws, interior and exterior sealant joints with a bond breaker because we don't have room for a backer rod. And so what I did here is I actually took this image. So I traced over the um, architectural reference. I took this, I copied it, and one of the really nice features in Trace is I can turn this into a axonometric really quick. So usually I'll have a reference line and then I'll just stretch this to my reference line to match. And then I can just plunk it over there. Another thing I can do is I can turn off these other layers I can take a screenshot of just this and make a stencil of it, which I do when I'm doing more iterations of several different details, but I need the same frame profile. This was just a one-off. So now that I have the line work done, uh, this is the major line work. Then I start building up uh, more information about the finishes. So here I'm just adding in the cedar shingles, the drainage mat, the weep screed, some of the sealant detail, um, then the interior finishes. And then more information just gets added on top of that. And it's not always the same, but it's relatively close. 
Next, some hatch information. So that was, you know, hatching the tiles, um, which I used the hatch tool for, and the mortar bed on the wall. The plywood hatch and the steel hatch, I tend and the wood hatch, I tend to do by hand because I'm just so used to it. Then the next thing I do is I add the annotations. I don't use a whole lot of colors. I just use primarily the black, the white um, for the main drawing. And then I use the gray for fills. So for the annotations, I just like doing everything by hand. Um, it just helps me think about the process um, and also think about the materials and the sequencing. Then the last thing I do is I add solid gray fill and what this does for me is I find I can show drainage spaces a lot better. So I know that this in here is a void uh, for the drainage plane. I know that this is the window frame profile. There's a void in here for drainage. Um, and it just helps give a little more information to the drawing. Um, I actually had a lot of feedback saying that that was really helpful for some people. And so when I do the, uh, the gray fill, I like to turn on layer actions, multiply. If it's just normal, you can see that the opacity of the page becomes important and the gray fill uh, doesn't become clear. It actually becomes quite opaque. So I like being able to control that a little more so I can see the line work so when I turn on multiply, the, the hatch is monolithic and it almost acts like a clear acetate over your drawing. And I find, depending on how dark it is, sometimes it can interfere with the annotation lines. So what I do at the very end is I pick up this layer and I bring it right back and I set it under everything else so it goes to the back. The black lines, the white lines are all on top of it. That's basically how I use Morfolio on a day-to-day -day basis.